Welcome back, beautiful people. Time for a more personal vlog and some reflections on my time here so far. So, I've been here for three weeks now. So I'm at the halfway point of my journey. And it feels like I, I actually have arrived at this point. <laughs> After all the madness of Manila, I found so many nice spots. And uh, this feels much better now. And in, in hindsight, I think I spent way too much time in Manila. <laughs> so next time I'm coming to the Philippines, I will probably just stay for one night as a buffer and then just get out, <laughs> go to nicer places. So Boracay was absolutely beautiful, but Palawan here is by no means less beautiful. It is, it is just a little different. So Boracay feels like a nice place to chill. I mean, there's nightlife, you, you can have some action if you want to, but for me it's more like a, a nice relaxation spot. Whereas El Nido feels different. El Nido itself is not really that attractive. It is more the starting point for tours. You really need to get out of the town in order to experience the true beauty of the Palawan coast. You need to get on a boat, you need to rent a kayak, you uh, need to go diving. Uh, this is what El Nido is all about and that also means that the people in El Nido are slightly different. So in Boracay you see couples, you see older people who just want to chill there. Whereas El Nido is a little bit younger. There are more backpacker crowds, um, or generally younger people because it's so activity focused. So after being here for three weeks, it's interesting to see how the way I plan my vacation has changed. So at first I didn't really have any plan. I was just coming to Manila, I had my hotel booked there, then I just wanted to see what I, what I want to do when I'm here. And that felt great, lots of flexibility, and I had so much time, right? So I didn't really need to plan out too much. But now that I'm at the halfway point, I have a better feeling for how much time I've spent here and how much time I still have. And that changes things slightly because even though I still have half of my time left, the end is kind of visible, the horizon is inside. So I actually felt the need to plan out the rest of my time as much as possible. So I'm not going to tell you right now what I'm going to do next, but uh, I have my plans and it's going to be some interesting locations as well. But yeah, it's certainly different when you when you don't have that much time left. And the thing is also, the very last part of the journey is fixed. So I have to come back to Manila at some point to catch my plane and also need some buffer time there to make sure I arrive on time. So I actually have less than three weeks because I need to circle back towards Manila at some point. So actually I can only plan like two, maybe two and a half weeks. So yeah, it feels like there's not so much time left. Unfortunate. And then I actually had a bit of an emotional moment when I realized that I'm thinking kind of in the same way about my life as well. Because I'm at the statistical halfway point. I spent half of my life and I have about the same time left, statistically speaking, if nothing bad happens. And I think I feel the same need to plan out more what I want to do still with my time. Because kind of similar to my journey here, the last part of the journey in life can also not really be planned. We don't really know what happens then, but we will certainly be less flexible. <laughs> so yeah, it's a bit less than half of the time I can still plan for, you know. Hey Dogo. So yeah, when you're younger, you feel the same kind of flexibility I felt at the start of my journey. There's just so much time and there's no real concept for how long everything is going to take. But after getting to the halfway point, that changes and you have a feeling for how much time you have. And I guess this naturally brings the need to plan ahead a little bit. But I don't want to go too deep here. <laughs> 
So let's talk about more experiences here in the Philippines. So, Batangas Port was certainly an interesting one. And I've learned to identify the scams here, which happen all the time. For example, when you get to a bus terminal and you get out of a tricycle there, there's a lot of people approaching you, asking you, where are you going, where are you going? And I figured out, fortunately beforehand, before I experienced it, that these guys are not official employees. They're just they're trying to help you out. They will give you directions. They actually bring you into the bus, but uh, then they demand a tip for it, right? <laughs> So these kinds of things you just need to be a little bit aware of when you're coming here. But, uh, I mean, I understand. I'm, I'm not judging. I understand that people need money here. Now, in my last personal vlog, I was slightly complaining about the local food. <laughs> and thank you for uh, all the viewers who um, wrote me comments and gave suggestions on what I can try here. And, uh, in fact, I did. I tried more local dishes and uh, had a fantastic time. So, I'm in love with Gina Taang. Uh, so I had a very nice Gina Taang here in El Nido, uh, which was absolutely fantastic. I had vegetarian lumpia, which was also amazing. Very, very masara. So, yeah, I've made my peace with Filipino food. <laughs> and I still love adobo, I have to say. Adobo is fantastic, even though it differs quite greatly depending on who cooks it. So it's never the same. It's always a little different. And I also have to say, Filipino transportation works pretty well if you know what you're doing. So I heard stories before coming here that there are usually big delays, buses are going whenever they want and maybe one or two hours later than scheduled, that flights are usually not on time. And I have to say, no, I, I didn't experience any of that. All the buses I took between cities were on time, uh, flights were working out well. Um, so yeah, I don't know, it's, it's great. I mean, you're, you're being overcharged as a foreigner on the tricycle, so you always have to haggle a little bit, but it's all right, all right? And it's not that much money. It's really cheap to get around, except the flights, depending on where you want to go. <laughs> they can be a bit more pricey. But the usual routes between the larger cities, domestic flights, are quite cheap. Well, at least for a foreigner, relatively speaking, of course. So what I really want to do more is interactions with the locals. I talked about this in my first video as well. And I think I'm getting better at it because I feel like I have arrived and I feel a little bit more self-confident in the bits of Tagalog I can speak. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's still a bit difficult here in the more touristy places because you don't quite get the authentic experience, right? So I was really, really happy to, to have found my guide who took me um, into the Boracay neighborhoods. I'll put the video somewhere up there. So that was a fantastic experience and thank you very much if you're watching this. But I think I want to do more of this type of content as well in the future and maybe outside of these very touristy locations. Uh, Boracay is just one of the tourist magnets. El Nido, of course, is another one. So you're bound to meet more foreigners than locals in the bars in the evening. So, yeah, I think I have to get out of the tourist spots for that. So yeah, these were a few bits about my experiences here so far. So, thank you very much for joining in for a brief update and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good time, bye bye.